Okay, welcome to the third quarter of 2020. Um, we have many highlights to share with you. Um, before we are going into the highlight, I just want to, to remind you that we, uh, Luna is also uh, happening uh, now with this uh, week, and we have the Primo update session uh, on the coming uh, first day. You are welcome to register. It's open for everyone. So this is the and uh, the, the timeline for Iluna and the Primo Working Group. Um, and you are welcome to use this link here to register to the Primo updates uh, at Iluna sessions as well. And we are going to talk about uh, the few highlights coming with both Primo, Primo VE, and I will mention uh, which one and which release. Uh, the highlight that we are going to um, to discuss, to, to share with you today and do a demo is the nurse enhancement to provide you an export to Excel, ability to export to Excel or to a CSV file. So one thing we will we'll demo. Uh, another uh, feature that we are highlighting in, in the area of personalization is to help a user uh, easy select and navigate to his recent use uh, search scope. I would like to um, I, I would like to uh, do a demo and also to tell you to which customer this can be target. Uh, more enhancement that we are doing to the collection discovery uh, as per, per your request about more sort of We would like also to highlight uh, new meta tags that we are adding to the Primo pages uh, in order to make, uh, to improve the visibility in, in the web and in social media. Another feature coming from the idea uh, that uh, is the ability to disable the edit option in the My Library card requested uh, by you. Uh, also, I will mention uh, uh, to which, uh, which customer can be used, what is the target. And we have many Primo V updates to share with you. So um, this is the, the agenda for today, uh, quarterly updates. Before we are going uh, in to, to see each one of the feature, I just would like to mention the timeline. Yesterday, you got uh, the release on your sandbox, uh, the one that are the multi-tenant sandbox. Uh, next week is going to be for the total care customer. Uh, in August uh, 2nd, multi-tenant production will get that. And after that, you will have also um, the sandbox and the dedicated uh, installation and the local for local customer it will be available on August 16. In addition, I also want you to note that we already published in the Knowledge Center the release schedule for Primo for 2021. So you can go over there to Primo release schedule and uh, uh, and uh, mark the dates for the installation for the 2021. For the Primo VE, Primo VE release is uh, on top of the platform, so the schedule is uh, the same as the Alma release. In this quarterly update, we are going to cover the release highlights that were uh, released in July, also were made available in the same box uh, on, on uh, July 2019, uh, last uh, Sunday. Uh, and uh, we are talking about the releases that are July, August, and September. There are a lot of the highlights to cover on, on that. I just want to mention that for the Primo VE, after the August release, uh, we are going to start a, a gradual uh, indexing process. We have the semi-annual indexing that is starting on top of August and supposed to be completed by uh, September. So is also something to mention uh, and note. We do we have uh, twice a year a full indexing of the data. Okay. Now, into the uh, enhancement. So this enhancement, the ability to export to Excel or CSV uh, file is a nurse enhancement uh, the coming for you. It was also raised in the idea. Uh, it's going to be released both in Primo and Primo VE in the August release. And what we are showing is the ability for user to select a bulk of records from the search results, and and then to have them export to Excel or to a to a file with the CSV format. And from the brief results, uh, they have the ability to select up to top 50 records as uh, as uh, any other export actions. 
uh, once we introduce the ability to, to do selection on the brief results, we also introduce the, uh, we enhance and extend the ability to select up to the top 50. Um, and when the system is loading top 50 behind the scene. So the same, the export uh, to Excel will also, will use this uh, uh, limit from the brief results. I just want to mention that uh, it's all the Excel is also available also for the My Favorite and from the My car, my Library Cards Loan and Request, okay? Uh, and before I'm going into the demo, what I want to mention is uh, the fields that you are going to see in the Excel are actually the same uh, fields as you configure to be displayed in the full display display section. And in addition to that, at the end, we also added a permalink to the records. Let's do a demo so I can uh, show you that. Okay, so I'm doing a search and I have the ability either to select a, a, a few or to select the top 50, as I mentioned. So I'm selecting the top 50 and I have a new export to Excel function here. Once I open it, I can choose whether I want to have it in Excel or in a CSV format. Just wanna mention if you are using CSV and your site is uh, uh, with uh, uh, not only English interface, you just need to make sure when you open the CSV in the Excel that the Excel is defined with the UTF to support the special characters. Um, so I choose to have the X, uh, Excel file type and I'll download. Okay, I'm download and the Excel now is being opened. Um, so this is Excel that is being opened uh, and you can see those are the fields and I can select uh, up to 50 records uh, from my search results now and those are the fields and as I mentioned at the end you will be able also to go back and link to the record to the specific records that we have uh, here and same goes for uh, the Excel now let me close this one and have the ability to add all of those to the my favorites uh, and and i will continue and add additional to my favorites and i want to share with you uh, let's say that that the functional and now i'm adding 60 records to the my favorites and I have the ability uh, within my favorites to load more than uh, 50 records. And uh, here is the export to Excel available also from the my favorites. And um, I can do the download or the CSV and it's uh, the same. I just want to uh, mention that if I'm doing scanning, so this is a CSV open, but it can also be opened with a notepad on any others. Uh, if I'm doing sign in, um, I hope that I do have request here, and I'm going to my request here um, from the my library card. We also had the, the nurse announcement, I think, last year to add the export action. I have also this add, uh, we also added the export to Excel to the request within my uh, favorite. So this is about, uh, this was the demo to show with you about this new uh, export to Excel um, um, capability action. Okay, next. Next feature is the easy selection of recent use search scope. This feature is about, it, it's, it's targeted to sites that have a long list of scopes defined. So there are sites that have like more than 80 libraries available in their scope. So the way that uh, the user are navigated to the search scope today are uh, not really uh, user friendly. So we thought how can we help to those uh, users to easily navigate to their most common uh, recent scopes or if a student for uh, uh, that to use more the uh, health library or medical library, 
Uh, I would like to, to navigate them easily. This is why what we added, um, we added to the top of the list, once user are using once uh, a set scope, we added to the top of the list, the recent used set scope. I marked with the icon of the recent. So uh, in, in this way, we are allowing user more personalized experience to navigate to their specific search scope uh, that will appear on the top of the list. This is one. Uh, uh, this is one capability that we expose more personalized experience. And the, the other one that we are uh, sharing, uh, we are uh, uh, adding is the we add the lookup or select here to help user find more easily and navigate uh, more easily uh, the specific uh, library specific scope uh, that you want to search. So this is uh, this feature is out of the box disabled. This feature was raised talking to customer with long list of scopes. Uh, uh, consulting them uh, and uh, until we get to this finalist. And we also saw uh, this feature in the idea where they mentioned the default. I just want to mention the default scope will remain the default scope that the library defined, but on the top of the list, we'll have the recent. So this feature is available with Primo August release, will come in VE for September release. And uh, I will do a demo for that. Okay. So let's say that I uh, I have a, I, I'm learning a, a computer science and I want to search for material that is the Python. So I'm searching and uh, my computer science library. This is something that already I search is now on the top of the list because I used it recently. So, uh, and let's say is that I con continue to search. I don't, uh, now I want to search for art. Just let me look at the list. Okay, uh, science. Uh, let's say that I want history to search for history. Um, and I'm searching here and fed a long list. Now my most common, uh, my most common searches are the American History Collection and the Computer Science, as you can see, they are ordered by the recent uh, of my use. Okay, so American History is on the top. I'm a, um, I can do, uh, I can save my most common up to the top three. So only recents will be uh, available uh, here at the top. And uh, just to be clear that uh, those are the top three of my recent use, and they will also appear here. They are not disappearing. Uh, so when I'm doing the lookup, um, I, I will be able to find even if I'm scrolling uh, to navigate that. Uh, so uh, a guest user, we can enjoy the recent uh, with this current session. A signed, use, a signed in user will enjoy those top recents even when the next time, even when he's signing in the next time. Uh, in Primo, we will be able to uh, to go to the most common uh, use recent scopes. So this is about uh, more personalization um, experience in uh, Primo. Okay, next is uh, is the ongoing effort that we are doing in order to to make Primo uh, more visible to the web uh, aligned with the standards. Uh, so this is under the title of the search engine optimization. The more meta tags, the more enriching of uh, uh, those meta tags. It's it, it, um, it's more helpful to make other crawlers read better uh, records from uh, from your discovery. Uh, specifically, now what we did is we added the open graph meta tags. Open graph. Uh, on the meta tags that uh, Facebook uh, actually declare, and they are the standard that if you want to share links cross, if you want to share links and make the links uh, um, visible nicely, that's mean made the link uh, shown with the, the image, shown with the title or with description. Uh, um, 
the way to, to achieve that is to add those meta tags. As you can see, the title, the OG title, open graph title, the OG description, OG image, and, and the type are the meta tags that now we added to each Primo full display to the header section. We added them so it could be read by uh, crawlers of like in Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, is, this is an example that I'm sharing, sharing link from in the Microsoft Teams. Uh, this is the way that Primo Record can be visible over there. Now you can now go and uh, try to and test that, but uh, uh, and and see uh, uh, to test if this is work. I just want to share that it's really also pending if the crawler of LinkedIn or Twitter, we are, we just opened the gate for those crawlers to be able to read the, all these open tags using um, what we call the dynamic rendering, the ability to read the header of Angular pages. Uh, so uh, we open that, but uh, whether those links can be displayed with the image is really up to the crawlers uh, to see if the crawlers or Facebook or, or other social media really manage to read on, on time those tags. So we open that so it will be visible. Um, I just uh, want to share and, and set an expectation that it's also pending um, the ability to read this on time uh, when we and you share links uh, in social media. So this is available with August release and will be available uh, by the end of the year also for the Primo VE. So in reaching the meta tags using the open graph. In addition to that, we also uh, added uh, more configuration to you to be able to define the description for your main uh, Primo site. So for each one of the records, the description and the title are taken from the metadata of the records. For your site, uh, same as you are configured the logo for your sites to be displayed, you should also uh, configure the description that will be uh, added uh, as a meta tag to the home site. So if your site is uh, your site uh, is linked from the web, um, crawlers of the web can read a, a better description that you manage to configure. So this is also something uh, we added now. Next, uh, we previously released the ability to sort on collection discovery. The minute we do that, we got another idea in the Excel. We would like to get more sort option. The reason that we previously deliver only two options, uh, sort by relevance or sort by uh, title, is uh, that the sort was uh, the sort functionality uh, should have worked uh, the same for both uh, for both uh, the sub collection and the item. So uh, we got. Uh, this was the common uh, the, the common uh, metadata that we could sort by. So as as you mentioned, and you wanted uh, more uh, more sort option to to be able to sort uh, the item also by date and by author. Uh, we did some analysis and we found out that um, the collection page you you tend to use collection page. I'm sorry, I'm still working from home, so I'm doing the remote with my kids. Um, sorry for the disruption. So, um, the more sort option, uh, we, we, we did analysis and we tend to find that the way you are using your collection page are, uh, you either use collection page that, that contain only items within or collection page that contain only uh, sub collection, the folders. Uh, and we found really rare cases where both items and sub collection are displayed within the same collection page. So learning that this is the most cases uh, that customers tend to use within the collection discovery, we decided uh, to split the sort by into two options. To have a sort items by that will uh, uh, display only once when collection page contains only item. And to have uh, and and then once doing that, we we are able to provide more options in the sort as you can see here, and uh, to display the sort sub collection by which will be only the title relevant as exists today. And in those rare cases where you have items and sub collection, you will be able to see two sort options, but those are 
the rare cases. So this is the, the way that we choose to uh, provide with more sort options, knowing that most of the cases you will see your, your patron will see sort items by. So this is one thing that we did with the sort option. And another thing that we wanted to, uh, to provide you is more control set the default sort uh, option per collection. So you can now go into the collection management uh, within Alma and define the default sort option to be, uh, that you would like to be visible for your patrons. For instance, if you are a collection of new books, uh, you may want to define the default sort option to be uh, the date newest. So you can go into Alma and set the date newest to be the default sort option. So any one of the patrons who will open uh, your discovery on the new books collection, will uh, the items will be sorted by the date newest for him uh, uh, from the beginning. So this is the additional capability that we added. It was already released in July in Primo V and will be available uh, in Primo August released as well. Next is another uh, um, request voted very highly in the idea. Uh, mentioned, we already mentioned over there that it could be done with the customization package, but we know customer uh, didn't want to do that with, I don't know if they didn't want to do that, uh, voted very highly to have that in configuration as opposed to do that by customization. So what we did is we added a configuration that allow you to hide the edit option. So if your uh, personal, uh, if your uh, if, if your patron personal information is uh, held in external system, and you do not want Primo to sync uh, to sync any update with this when Patron uh, is editing. You have the ability to now to configure the option to hide the edit options over there. So this is available in Primo August release. Will be available uh, at the end of the year to, in Primo VE as well. Okay, more improvement that we are doing in the, in, the, in the mobile area. So far, user uh, uh, using the mobile device could not use the My Favorite to filter labels. The options that we are exposing in the desktop to filter by label or to sort by the favorites was not available through the mobile. Now we did, uh, we add the icon of the filtering over there um, uh, in the same look and feel and the same design as this tweak my results, a favorite, so you will have tweak my saved records and you have the ability to do this, uh, uh, to, to filter the label, to click on the label, close, and, and you will get already your label filter. And same goes to the search by. So this is available both Primo V, August released, uh, and Primo. For updates, before I'm going into the Primo V updates, uh, more updates is the upgrade to the Oracle Analytics server. Uh, for the Primo VE customer, this the timeline is aligned with the Alma timeline, and we will add to each release notes uh, the, the, the timeline uh, of Alma. For Primo customer, we in, in August release, we did the preparation, the infrastructure to rely uh, and to support the move and the migration. The migration, uh, will be start in the uh, in the next quarter. Uh, we will have, we will provide a detailed timeout for the migration for the Oracle Analytics Server. Uh, also for the Primo, we are asking Primo local customer to make sure that they will have the August release installed in order to be able to to support the migration. We will contact the local customers to ensure that. Um, uh, and, and that's it for the, uh, uh, the, the Oracle Analytics server. So uh, the timeline will be published very soon. Uh, as to the uh, analytics, uh, uh, Primo Analytics improvement, uh, we had many cases from you uh, about um, the zero results report. Uh, and uh, we dedicated a lot of time this release in order to, this quarter, in order to identify cases, uh, to identify the cases that should be reported as zero results. We fixed uh, bugs that were uh, considered to be a false zero results. Some instances uh, where 
user really see results and we reported them in a zero result. So uh, we fix those cases. We also fix, fix cases where zero results where a user got the result and the application did not report uh, to the analytic that it was a zero result. So uh, those fixes are coming with the August release already released also for Primo VE. Uh, your feedback is welcome with regarding to that. Uh, uh, so we did a, a lot of analysis to improve the report of the zero results. And uh, with regarding to the accessibility, I just want to share with you that uh, we are working with an external accessibility company. Its name is DECQ. We already conducted an external uh, audit. Uh, we are trying to comply with the WACA 2.1 AA. Uh, we are now in a phase of fixing all of the issues that are the, the audit that the we found during the audit and we are delivering fixes ongoing uh, and uh, uh, we are we will continue to work with this company until uh, um, at the end of the year November in order to provide you with uh, a clean VPAT and fix uh, uh, all the cases that were identified by them you will see in the upcoming release a lot of fixes Ability, edit a lot of area labels, so you will see the ongoing fixes, uh, publishing release notes, um, and so I just want to share that this is the effort that we're also doing in terms of accessibility. Now, uh, we, we're regarding to the Primo VE update, please, I hope that you are still with me. Uh, Primo VE updates, I'm going to share the highlights that were released in July, that now released in August and are uh, coming in September. So what was released in July, uh, the highlight was the, now for loading external data source, we added the option of the reload option. So whenever you are changing a uh, normalization rules and you want to update the data according your to your changes, uh, you can use the reload option that now guarantee that the existing data will reload, no need to go outside to harvest the data again. It just reload the existing with the new changes to your, norm, your, your normalization rule. So this is something that released um, in July. Uh, another thing released in July, the ability on the request form to add a calculate queue button and uh, to display to your patron uh, their place in the queue on the request form, so they will decide whether to submit the request uh, pending their, uh, their place in the queue. So this is an additional. More things coming in July is in the view it, in the view online, there now uh, you have the option to display related digital uh, material. So far, there was a display related only for the electronic. Now we made it available also for uh, digital records. Um, additional things released in July is uh, and previously in Primo is the exposed webbook for searching external indexes. Um, um, so this is allowing you to integrate with more data coming from external indexes and let your user use the same look and feel and remain with Primo and search for additional data. I'm sharing that we are working also with vendors that are implementing like the Access World, the News Bank, that are now implementing that on top of VE and will soon publish a, a message on that. And so uh, this is about the capability of the uh, search webbook. More coming in August release, more option, and I'm going to highlight in the slide. We increase the number of local fields that you can use. We allow consortia to manage local fields centrally. I will dedicate a slide for that. Uh, also for this, en enhancing the uh, import, uh, the discovery import capability for external source data to support also uh, physical records. We will I'll share with you that. Uh, coming from your idea, giving you more flexibility to custom resource types by adding multiple condition, more condition and combination for uh, to define this uh, resource type. Also, Alma nursing enhancements that was released for Primo in the in the Alma mesh app, and now coming in Primo VE, um, adding notification to the purchase request alert. 
um, uh, that a resource uh, is found before users submit a request. I will also add a dedicated slide for that. Um, plus, uh, uh, an additional thing that we are releasing in August release, now the peer reviewed facet will also, uh, uh, will also works for your local catalog. So far, the peer reviewed will only, only filter records that consider peer reviewed and coming from the central index now. It can also, with the August release, will catch the local catalog uh, peer review data. I think by, with doing so, we now can say that Primo V is supporting the peer reviewed and open access uh, facet also for the local catalogs, not only from the central index. More coming in August release regarding research sharing. Now, a uh, user can be able to see and, uh, and to submit a resource sharing, sharing request, even if the data is available, uh, electronically available for them. Even if you display the view online, there is an option to users to uh, request for the physical item and to allow you borrowing, at from other, uh, borrowing it from other libraries. So this we be going to August release and in September release, and I will highlight, we are adding for the consortia uh, uh, an option for users to know what is uh, the activity, uh, wh where which institution is the activity, I will share a site. So uh, you can assist this schedule in order to see what was released in July and August and what are the highlights for that. And now I would like to go uh, uh, into more details. Uh, for, for, the, uh, for the following. So we are now providing you more option to manage your local fields. Any institution now can define more than 50 local fields so far. We're providing up to 50 local fields that we define. Now we increase it to 100 local fields, okay? And for consortia, we are also allowing the option to centrally manage a local field. So if you want the local field to be centralized and distributed to all of the member institutions, uh, you have to define it uh, for the new fields uh, in order to not to have conflicts with the currently existing uh, local field that were defined. So if you want to define uh, a local field like 51, I will have this distribute uh, option where I am from my network zone uh, can distribute to the uh, member institution in the IZ uh, um, this field and I can choose when I have this distribute uh, whether to override the institution uh, uh, member definition or to to let it stay uh, with its own definition so uh, there is an option to choose that uh, once clicking on the distribute you will also be able to to uh, after the report, the job is running, the distribution job is running, to be able to get a report uh, for the status of the distributions across the consortia. Okay, so this is about more option to manage local fields. Um, more about the discovery uh, info job. Uh, so far, what we introduce when you are uh, for the input profile, so far, we, we had the option to import external uh, uh, records that are considered uh, as online. So the only way you load the data, that was only available online. Now with this enhancement, what we are allowing, uh, we are allowing you to load uh, external resources that are considered physical items, physical resources and the external system. And, uh, you, you have the ability to define, as you can see here in the delivery sinks, uh, in the delivery section of the input profile, you have the ability to define how the link to the request will be, whether it's going to be a static URL or a template where you can add more parameters. So you have the ability to define and mark that you want the specific resource will be uh, with a link to request. Uh, once you are adding, once we are adding that, there is, will be adding an option to have a check holding for these specific physical resources. Uh, and you will have the ability to have this link to external request uh, 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 form in order to go outside and, and, and let the user filling the request to get a, 
to get the item uh, physically from the external system. So now you can um, load both online resources and uh, physically uh, resources from external sources and uh, to be able to uh, reflect it to your patron with this link to external request. Okay. Um, allow multiple condition for local resource types. So um, we got, and we already also had a, a conversation with the customer. Uh, we got from the idea a request for more flexibility to define a custom resource type. Uh, you wanted to be able to determine resource type that is a combination of several sources, several fields from the mark. Uh, um, so in order to provide you with such flexibility, we added the option to add up to four conditions. So you can use a combination of uh, four fields or subfields and uh, define the logic, whether it's and or her, in order to to determine uh, uh, the custom resource type. So those are um, those are the rules that uh, uh, we added and coming from the idea. Another uh, in answer with this is actually an almaners, okay, uh, that was released. Uh, I think last month we for the primo ca for primo customer within the mesh app. Now it's available also for the primo ve customer. What we are adding now is the option to have um, uh, once user fill in identifier within the purchase request. We are using those identifier to try to match. The system is using those identifier to attempt to match if the library already holds the data before users submit the request. So if the user, uh, if, the, if the system found the match, um, and when a user will click the send request, it will get this message, a match for the identifier was found with the option either to go and see the, the record itself and then get it not via the purchase request, just get it using uh, the get it uh, uh, section. Or uh, you also have the ability to go back after the season and fill in with more details uh, if you would like, or to continue and submit the request. I, I, I like to demo that. Uh, let's demo this one. So uh, just let me log in. Um, so just to, yeah. This is this one, um, and I feel this one. And I'm going now to try and get a uh, pride and prejudice. I will try to submit the request, and the system will tell me the match is a match was uh, a match for the identifier was found. And now I can go and view the records. Actually, view the records is leading me to. Uh, View the record is leading me to an open URL, okay, um, which I actually user can go and try to get and request uh, the item, or I can go back clicking on the no and fill in with, with more uh, details, or I can continue to submit the request. So this is the notification, the alert notification uh, found that we are adding uh, to the flow to in order to. Uh, help the user find more easily what you want, if the library already holds this resource. Okay, so back to the presentation. Ah, by the way, I want to say that we also improve the look and feel of the blank purchase request and the resource sharing request, making it more centralized, so it's also something we did here. And I think that the last, uh, last feature that I wanted to share with you is my library card, okay? Uh, uh, so we are adding an improvement to the My Library card for consortia. So when user enter the consortia and the My Library card, and you have the list of institution uh, in the consortia, now we will have an icon, a new icon, which is a, like an has an activity icon that you will be able to see uh, on which institution it actually has a, a, has activity on. And when I'm saying as activity, I'm referring it's. It can either add loans, requests, 
all fine. So you can see that this user has activity uh, in the Alma University and the Open University, but uh, and, and is and doesn't have any activity on the university on the knowledge. So we can go ahead and link those both. And we also added a more quicker way to filter that. We added a filter uh, to show me, show me only the institution that I have an activity. Clicking on that, I have the as activity institution. We also uh, saw that they requested in the idea. And this is coming in the in free movie September release. Okay, so I think that uh, I cover most of the features that I wanted to share with you. And uh, before the questions, we can go ahead and see what is expected to come in the next quarter. So in the next quarter, we will complete the nurse announcement for uh, the February preferred record by date. Uh, for the Primo VE, this was already released uh, in, in quarter two. Uh, and if for Primo customer, it's one we were going to, to be released in the November release. We also are adding another capability to help you share links using QR. Uh, so we are going to get QR code to the uh, and um, QR code to any links in the system, so you will be able to promote your uh, records or res specific results using this QR. And uh, I also want to mention that we are also expecting to have the upgrade of the analytics uh, and server uh, in the next quarter. We're also going to add to provide you with more option to share the analytics reports using not only email, uh, also an FTP. And uh, with regarding to the Primo VE, what is coming next is the ability to make the, um, um, more, give you more details on the availability status when item, uh, when the status is marked is not available. We will provide more details for the patron if the item is lost or check out more details of the not available. This is coming with the Primo VE. We also are going to provide consortia with the option to boost uh, more control to boost for their institution, for the specific institution. Uh, and so this is what is coming uh, next. 